After the Fukushima nuclear catastrophe in Japan, a lot of people wondered out loud just what the hell the Japanese were doing, building nuclear power plants along the coast of an area prone to earthquakes and tsunamis. It's as though they were just asking for this to happen. Who could have been so stupid? Surely, here in the United States, we're a lot more careful with where we build our nuclear power plants, right? Well, no. This is the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant, just outside Nebraska, just outside of Omaha, and no, uh, in Nebraska. And no, it's not supposed to be completely surrounded by water. But I suppose that's what happens when you build a nuclear plant right in the middle of the floodplain of the Missouri River. Floodwaters from the rising Missouri River have settled at a foot and a half above where the plant sits. And the only thing stopping Fort Calhoun from flooding, just like Fukushima flooded, is a six foot high rubber wall surrounding the plant. But that's not the only nuclear power plant in danger. Just down the river in southeast Nebraska, the Cooper nuclear plant is also on the verge of flooding out. That plant sits at 903 feet above sea level, but on Sunday, floodwaters from the Missouri River peaked at 900 and a half feet, meaning just two and a half feet stood between Nebraska and a Fukushima-like disaster. So yeah, we almost lost Nebraska over the weekend, and yet no one seems to know about it. Back on June 7th, when the floodwaters first started threatening the Fort Calhoun plant, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission received a notification of an unusual event, the lowest level warning on the NRC's four-stage disaster classification system. No big deal, they said. Keep moving. No droids in this car. But it does seem a little odd that since June 6th, the FAA has been enforcing a no-fly zone above the crippled plant. When asked about the no-fly zone, the FAA responded by saying it was put in place for security reasons that we can't reveal. Just like the no-fly zone over the BP oil spill, which successfully stopped both news reports and scientific analysis of the water over the spill. You know, whatever's going on in Nebraska, this is a warning that Fukushima could happen here in the United States with very little warning. Not only do we operate nuclear plants in flood basins in Nebraska, but we also have plants built on fault lines in California and in the path of tornadoes in the American Midwest. And for those who are more superstitious, there's the Diablo Canyon power plant in California it's not only named after the devil, but it also sits on top of an Indian burial ground. So is it really that our nation's nuclear plants are more secure than Japan? Or are we just, so far, really, really lucky? Frankly, I think it's time to stop rolling the dice with nuclear power. In the last decade, Germany built the equivalent of 10 nuclear power plants by putting solar panels on the roofs of hundreds of thousands of homes. And with that renewable power, Germany has announced that they will completely close down every single nuclear plant in their nation. Just last week, voters in Italy took to the polls to reject, by a 95% to 5% margin, a plan to build nuclear power plants in that nation. And in Denmark, a country that, as far back as 1988, banned the construction of nuclear power after Chernobyl, more than 20% of their electricity is generated through wind power. And within a decade, that'll be a half, 50%. Japan has just announced that they're ditching nuclear power. Fairly obvious reasons. The Swiss have announced no, new, new, no more new nukes. Even China has suspended the construction of all new nuclear power plants there. But here in the United States, we're building rubber walls around our submerged nuclear plants and just praying that the waters don't keep rising. And in an environment that's growing increasingly volatile, with more flooding and more tornadoes, thanks to global climate change, that strategy is almost certainly destined for failure. It's time to ditch nuclear power here in the United States. Look at what's going on in Nebraska right this very minute. And let's hope we're not too late. At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, tests have resumed on a filtering system for decontaminating radioactive wastewater. Meanwhile, with levels of contaminated water continuing to rise inside the plant compound, the operator has instead decided to reduce the amount of water it's pumping into the reactors.
Tokyo Electric Power Company first tried running the decontamination system last Friday, but was forced to halt it after only five hours due to a sharp rise in radiation levels around the U.S.-made equipment for absorbing, absorbing radioactivity. On Tuesday, TEPCO began a test run before dawn, but halted it at around 7.20 a.m. after a pump that sent water into French-made decontamination equipment shut down automatically. After adjusting the amount of water being pumped, TEPCO resumed the test shortly after midday. It plans to continue testing the system for two or three days before resuming full-scale filtering operations. There is concern that temporary storage facilities for radioactive wastewater at the plant will overflow in about a week. On Tuesday, TEPCO began reducing the amount of water it's pumping into three of the reactors while carefully monitoring them for any resulting rise in temperature. The utility is also considering contingency plans to transfer the highly radioactive wastewater to tanks intended for filtered wastewater. Concerns over radioactive exposure are growing among residents who live next to the newly set evacuation advisory zones near the power plant. The people live just outside specific spots in Date and Minamisoma cities that the government last week designated for voluntary evacuation. Accumulated radiation levels in these spots are expected to exceed the threshold of 20 millisieverts a year. Minamisoma city officials visited on Monday the homes of five families in the Jisabara district next to the zones. The officials checked the radiation levels around the houses at the request of the concerned residents. The highest level recorded was 2.45 microsieverts per hour at one meter above the ground in the house's backyards. <laughs> Minamisoma City says it will consult with the central government about the findings. The Japanese government plans to issue a massive amount of special bonds to help Tokyo Electric Power Company compensate victims of the Fukushima nuclear accident. On June 14th, the cabinet approved a bill to help TEPCO pay compensation for nuclear-related damage. It later submitted the bill to the current session of the Diet. The legislation calls for the establishment of a new body to boost TEPCO's capital and extend loans to the utility. The necessary funds will be raised by issuing special bonds. The government will make arrangements to include special bonds worth 1 trillion yen or 12.4 billion dollars in the second supplementary budget for the current fiscal year. The government also says TEPCO would repay the loans using its annual profits in an effort to minimize the burden on the public. But the opposition is objecting to the compensation framework. Member states of the International Atomic Energy Agency have agreed on the need for emergency inspections of nuclear reactors around the world. The agreement came on Tuesday, the second day of the IEA's ministerial meeting in Vienna. A working session was held to discuss nuclear safety based on the lessons from the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Some delegates said it's not appropriate to study universal safety measures based on the Fukushima disaster. They said the accident was a special case, as the plant was hit by tsunami more than double the predicted height. Other delegates stressed the importance of stricter safety procedures to prevent nuclear plants from completely losing their backup power sources. And we will get to Friday and then we will come out with uh, conclusions and we look forward to a concrete uh, action plan for the future as to how we can uh, take these lessons forward and implement them on a global way. However, rifts are emerging between the nuclear and non-nuclear countries on how to improve safety. Attention is focused on whether the IEA member nations will be able to overcome their differences and come up with specific measures.